we're matchy matchy today. <laughs> you guys love when we do the bopsy twin thing, so That's we're right. bopsy twinning. A couple of people were like, um, did you guys plan that? Yes, 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 we, yes did. we did. It wasn't an accident. <laughs> we're not right. shopping in totally different places, buying the exact same stuff in different That's colors. Right. That's right. So Shannon brought these over today. These are pretty. I like them. Yeah. Express. Express. Um, okay, so today we're talking about distractions. Mm -hmm. Oh, guilty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> As I drove past your exit today. Yeah. I was talking on the phone. I was very busy. Yeah. Having I've done that a million times. I was on the phone with someone this morning. Was it you? Who was I talking no. to this morning? I was, oh, T, my friend Tina. I was on the phone with her. Or no, I was on the phone with Stephanie. And we were talking about something work-related. And then I got a ding on my phone, a text. And while I was talking to her, I instantly, <laughs> like, stopped talking. And then she was like, hello? And I was like, oh, sorry. I mean, literally, yeah. that is exactly what happened. I'm like, I'm so sorry. I got distracted by a text. But that is our life now. And that ding, mm -hmm. what that ding does to our brain, brain, they put electrodes on people. And when people hear the ding, like the endorphins that get released, yeah. which is why I love, like when I'm in my car, there's a mode that will turn everything off when you're driving. Yeah. And it's so important because when we hear that ding, it doesn't matter if we're going 85 miles an hour on the highway, our brain's like, ooh, yeah. what is that? Right. And it wants to check it. And right. I don't even know if we have the capacity to, to not. not. Yeah. Because I mean, it's so powerful. It's so powerful. Yeah. And what I love is, uh, you know, our, our mm, I, sorry, our, my former She's distracted. producer. She's distracted. My former Five producer. Five. Um, Holly, who, who worked at CBS yeah, 12, still Holly. works at CBS 12, Hi. she sent us this article and she suggested this topic, which I think is actually a really good topic. And the article is titled, Here's How Pressing Pause on Distractions Boosted My Creativity. It's by a man named Brian Solis. And he basically said that he started to notice that he couldn't focus mm -hmm. anymore. Yeah. He felt on edge often. He wasn't having fun. He wasn't happy. He was constantly putting off me time and time with friends and family. And he couldn't keep up with commitments. And he, he tracked it all back to his phone mm -hmm. and how often he was on his phone, his computer, mm -hmm. on all of his devices constantly. Yeah. And he started to feel anxious and it started yes. to impact his creativity. Yes, I, I, I have witnessed myself, I get ampy. I don't know if that's mm -hmm. a word, yeah. but I get like ampy and agitated and kind of like just juiced up yeah. when I'm on my phone a lot. I'll notice if I'm like kind of like trying to get through returning messages and checking texts and then I'll get home and I'm like that with my husband. I'm like, did, did you do this? Did you do it? And I, I'm like kind of firing at him yeah. and it's like, my whole demeanor changes changes versus when I'm maybe home for an hour and I've watched a little TV and had some dinner and I haven't touched the phone, I'm able to calm down. But when I'm on it, it's because my brain's jumping. It's like Facebook and then my and then my emails and then notes and then my messages and then phone call and I'm just like zzzz, and yeah. I can't get I'm that down. down when I'm still connected to it. So yeah. it's not a it's not a good look for me. <laughs> It's not a good look. You know, and I think with social media too, what it's also done is create this outside world that we think we're more connected to other people, but in reality, you're not, you mm -hmm. know, you're connecting to non-reality. Well, you know, it's so funny. I just realized we were talking about talking about this topic and I was like, I don't really have much to say. And I just realized <laughs> I have a ton, ton to, to say, say because I have gotten to do my own personal research project and I'll tell you why. Oh. Why is that, Shannon? Well, I'll tell you, Suzanne, because my husband is not a phone guy, okay? Yeah. So he's 55 years old, just got his AARP card. <laughs> I love it. He's going to be really right? proud you I told know. him that. I right. <laughs> told us that. Told him, but, it, but he doesn't lick it. But he, um, so he's not a phone guy, right? He's a UPS worker, so you cannot touch that phone when you're when on you're a driving. UPS truck. Yeah. Danger, danger, fines, yeah. bad. So as a result, he's on a truck 14, 15 hours a day, right? Yeah. And um, you know, he'll call, you know, when he gets back to the building, hey, I'm on my mm -hmm. way home, what do you want for dinner? He comes home, he's not a social media guy. Right. So the phone is somewhere in the bedroom and yeah. we're watching TV together, we're talking, and because he's not a phone guy, I have been good at putting my phone away. You know, yeah. I try to figure it out, get home, get stuff done at the office before I get home, maybe return a few texts and then try to put the phone down. Mm -hmm. Well, my husband got injured. He got injured three and a half months ago, torn rotator cuff, surgery, and he's been home 
24 seven. And he's been a phone guy. What happens when you're home 24 seven? You're Googling, you're Googling, you're, you're looking at articles, you know, he's reading about boats and reading about this and reading about that. TV gets boring, he can't golf, he can't fish, he can't do anything, he's in recovery, mm -hmm. and he's only able to do physical therapy. So what has happened is that he became very addicted to his phone. Wow. So I would come home after a 10, 12 hour day, want to connect, be used to connecting, because I usually put my phone down, his right. phone's down, we sit, we talk, we have dinner together, mm -hmm. or we love to watch TV together, we have our shows, we'll watch Dancing with the Stars or whatever, and we'll be like, oh my God, I love this group. We hold hands, we chat, we talk mm -hmm. about the show, no. no, because the minute that we would watch TV, his brain needing more firing, yeah. would, the show wouldn't Instantly be enough. He would phone. pick up his phone. He would start reading article, and I would see him doing this, yeah. and I even have a little bit of a dizzy thing with motion, yeah. and I can't even relax because I see the swiping next yeah. to me and all of it. So I literally, I had to sit him down and say, you know, I don't think this is anybody's fault, but right. you're, we're not connected anymore. Right. Like we're not even holding hands because he needs his hands for the phone. Right. We're not watching our programs. We're not, and it's fascinating, Susan, because I've had a million couples come in and talk about the phone. And to be honest, I didn't really know what they were talking about no. because I wasn't experiencing it. No, but no now more. when you're sitting next to somebody, they are right there. You can touch them. He, this is how no. close we are. And I was not connected to him because yeah. he's on that phone. I'm watching a show, I'm experiencing a different thing than he's experiencing in his skin, mm -hmm. so we're not on the same page. And it's taken a toll. Yeah. It has taken a significant toll, and he's more likely if I'm, like we used to be at the table for lunch, and I'd be like, oh, my client needs, and I'd be like, sorry, honey, and I'd pick it up real quick. Now the minute I touch my phone, he's got his phone up, he's scrolling, he's in articles, he's da 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 right. and now I put my phone back down, and I'm waiting for 10 or 15 minutes. And he's still scrolling. And he's still scrolling, and he's aware, wonderfully, he's aware, and so yeah. that's good. We do have a conscious marriage, but, but it's I that say dopamine it is, being released, right? He it can't is, stop he it. He can't stop it, and yeah. you know, he does now, and he'll be right. like, oh, sorry, or I'll be like, hey. Hey, we're yeah. now that couple at the restaurant that's on their phone right. and we're not even talking and <laughs> right. he's like you're right you're right so thankfully he gets it but it's fascinating how now that's become a thing yeah. and thank god i mean if he were to do twitter facebook we would never have a conversation yeah because it would be so it would become so addictive because he has nothing else right, right now right. except for the tv what we did decide to do which was wonderful is he went and bought like six books and so he's now reading Tony Robbins book. And he's so why, golf you know, I was wondering this because I feel like when I go into my room and I read and I read a book, like it's it doesn't really have that same as if I'm reading something off of a device. What's the difference? Well, the first thing that they talk about is blue light. Yeah. The light that comes from this really does something to, to our your brain. brain. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the things is they yeah. say no blue light for an hour before bed. So right. there Which must I try be something do. with the lighting. Yeah. So it's definitely the lighting. I also think it's like it's kind of like the same concept, right? Remember when that the the surround sound and the TV stuff came out where there was like you could have a screen within a screen and you could have oh, like sixteen, yes. right? Yeah. <laughs> right? Right? Do you remember right. that? And like right. the guys would be like, oh my god, and they're watching golf and football and sports. Yeah, it's all the this, same all this concept because yeah. you're overstimulating the brain yeah. and the brain is reacting back. So it's the same concept when you have your phone, you're reading an article, but then you get a text and then you're thinking, oh, let me put this in my notes because right. I just remembered this. So there's so much looking at you on your screen and so yeah. much popping up and sounds popping up that it's stimulating all those parts of the brain and then you're really not present at all for anything. Yeah. So what are some solid tools? Because I feel, well, I, I have some solid tools, but I, I still get really distracted mm -hmm. and I am so guilty. I, you know, my kids sometimes say to me, mom, you're in a phone coma. Oh, which is wow. like, uh, oh, you know, you're like, oh, oh <laughs> like, slow motion, like, I wow. know, and so I'm tr really trying to be better Ooh. about that, but it is, it's hard, you know, for instance, the other day, my son had lacrosse practice, and he wanted me to stay for the practice, mm. which now, means he wanted you to watch, he wanted me to watch the, the practice. practice. But I had some drama going on with work. I had some cancellations for, I was supposed to record the podcast the next morning and somebody canceled on me. It was like 7.30 at night. Oh, wow. And I had to record the next morning at 9 a.m. So I had to find someone quickly. Yeah, fair and so I was like on my phone, sure. pretty much, you know, most of fair the time, yeah. trying to get this yeah. together. Sure. And he comes up to me and was like, mom, can you at least just watch this one part? And I was like, oh! I was oh, like, I'm so sorry, God. baby. But they don't care that you have a cancellation or whatever. I mean, I, was, leg I, I was legitimately doing yeah. work, but it still broke my heart, yeah. you know? That's painful. It's painful. painful. Because what he's saying is, 
I feel invisible. Yeah. You don't see me. You're right. something is more important than me, which of course nothing is more important, which is why you were doing right. it because right. you have bills to pay and you, right. need, you know you need to keep this business right. going. So, but they don't understand that. So yeah. that so that's the first thing you you're highlighting a great thing. Number one, I don't believe I don't want to minimize my brilliance so to speak but like I don't believe I'm strong enough to not respond I don't think anyone of us are strong enough right so for me when I recognize I need to be present and and my son's 18 and he still does that like if he's at like soccer or whatever like he'll be like you didn't even see the play like they (laughs) and you're a trap and I'm like are you kidding me I I know I was like this I was like after that I was like okay yeah (laughs) I'm watching they care about that they care about that so I think for me, I have to switch it to silent. I have to switch it to silent. 100%. My phone is always on silent. Yeah. I cannot hear notifications. And that way, I only check the phone when I need to check the phone. Right. You know? Right. Like, so my phone's not ringing. I don't get dings. In fact, that sound when I hear on other people's phones agitates me so much. Yeah. it annoys me, and even my daughter's phone. I'm like, can you just turn that on silent? Yeah. You know, I don't need to hear all that. It yeah. causes anxiety. It does me. for me too. Yeah, yeah. But, and that's what—that's the endorphins that get released in the brain. Right. So I think for a lot of people, though, I'm impressed to hear. <laughs> not surprised though, because if you text Suzanne, <laughs> she doesn't respond. <laughs> so someone, so someone text, like, no wonder. Someone texted me the other day, and then they did a follow up text a few days later. I'm like, oh my god, I'm so sorry. <laughs> you know, because I do. I get like. It's overwhelming. It's overwhelming. No, so so that's a great one. I don't right. think most people do that. So I think that is a really specific tool. Mm-hmm. You go to your son's game, you put your phone on silent, and you put it in your purse. Yeah. Right? And don't give me this crap of, well, I have another kid. You know what? Then maybe you text your husband, hey, I'm putting my phone on silent. I'm going to be present for Chase. How about you put your phone on in case our daughter needs somebody? She right. can call you, and you can even text the daughter, hey, daddy's a, a, alert if you need him. Right. I'm putting my phone on silent for an hour so I can watch Chase's baseball right. game. So I think that we have to disconnect and unplug when right. we want to show up for people. Right. I think the second rule is an hour to two hours before bed, we put it on done. charge in the room, put yeah. it on silent, we're done. We spend time with our kids, our family, our dog, yeah. whatever Get it is. Get an old school alarm clock because a lot of people say, well, I have to have it as my alarm. But I, you I know, still have the same alarm that I had when I was a kid. You do? I do. Yeah, when I went on that um, sabbatical with no phone for a week, I did right. it as a kind of like an experiment it really was like I was a happier person yeah I was a happier calmer more peaceful person during that time well you know it's fascinating and this is going to be a total side note so apologize for the distraction but I think it's important my alarm clock I am terrified of it breaking because I get so anxious with the way that the phone works to wake you mm-hmm. <laughs> right? <laughs> right it's like such a traumatic way for me to wake up right. my alarm clock goes <laughs> very calm and nice and that's the serious like seriously go find an alarm clock that has a more soothing way of waking you because Mm -hmm. your phone is it's like pick your big ding dong it's like none of it's soothing none of it like my alarm clock like it's a new sound in the room so my brain's like oh it's time to get up but it doesn't jerk me into an awake state yeah so we are even you know like debating with you if your alarm clock on your phone is even a good idea because it's going to again release so many endorphins in your brain right the men are going what the women are you get me women right our yeah. hormones cortisol adrenaline like we're, we wake up anxious anyway because right. of our perimenopause menopause so you need to wake up a little soothed anyway so i think it's yeah. a great idea to get an alarm clock get disconnect from your phone put it on charge put it in your room and put it on silent an hour before unless of course you have kids but there again if you have a house phone text your kids hey when you need me to pick you up from baseball call, call me the house phone, phone. Yeah. so so we're not without options to yeah. get away from it so I, I mean and come important. on we all grew up well our age group we all grew up without cell phones yeah, and we survived. you know we survived right, right. <laughs> you know Definitely. we survived Put the phone down when you're sitting with your spouse watching TV. If you're sitting with your spouse watching TV and you're both on your phones, you're not sitting with your spouse watching TV. No. I'm here to tell you. Well, I'm right here. And this is, I have couples. I do, I specialize in couples work. It's my favorite work. And I hear it all day and twice on Sunday. People are like, but I'm sitting right there. I can hear him. I can, I'm good. I'm, no, you're not. And now I know it because I've lived it. Mm -hmm. There is no connection between my husband and I when he's on his phone and I'm watching TV. We are doing different activities. We're not commenting to each other. We're not laughing together at the same things. Mm -hmm. Like, find a series on Netflix that you both love. 
ours is good girls right now. We are addicted to that stuff. Right. Um, but And we watch it together. We laugh together. We talk about it. It connects us. Yeah. Do not. So put the phone down. If you're spending time with your spouse, get off your phone and get off your laptop and yeah. your, your computer. Yeah. I, you know, I dated a guy that when we were at the table, at dinner table, at like at a restaurant, yeah. like his phone would always come out and it triggered me so bad. Because we're not here together. Yeah. And so I, mm-hmm. I always used to say, but you know, it was always work or something. It's you always, know, it's always something. work. You yeah. know, it was yeah. always something. Oh, I have to have it for work. And I'm like, well, you need boundaries. Like we, I, this bothers me. Like you need boundaries. And it was the same with the kids. Like I don't let my kids, I don't want my kids bringing their devices when we go out to dinner yeah. Because, you know, I feel like, oh, they're just, they said, well, oh, well, while we're waiting for the food, yeah. But while we're waiting for the food, let's talk. Connect. Yeah. Let's connect. Let's connect. Like, you don't need to be constantly connected. Well, and so I see a lot, a lot of people in my world are realtors. And I get it. The house just went for sale. They want to see it tomorrow at 9. They're texting you at 9 p.m. I get it because guess what? I am that girl. Right, <laughs> the girl that's right. like, can you get I want to see the house. Of the house. Can you come here now? <laughs> right. Where are you? Right. So I get it, but you know what? In my business too, there's a 50,000 therapists. I get a call. If I don't call back for two or three days, which I do often, to be honest, mm-hmm. a lot of times people will be like, oh, well, so-and-so got back to me sooner. And I'm thinking, good, that's the person for you because yeah. I have a family. I have other things that are important. And I don't want to call you back within 24 hours. I don't want to be... That, that person, person in your life. Yeah. I want to be your therapist that you see once a week, that you only reach out when you're in dire crisis, and that you otherwise maintain yourself. And if you need to know when your appointment is, you text me, and you're fine with me getting back to you in a right. day or so because I don't want that life. Yeah. So you have to decide as a realtor, What's whatever business, you. what life do you want? Because let me tell you something. I know some great realtors that don't live and die by their phone because they're well sought after, they're, they've got great relationships, and people will wait the day to hear back from them or whatever. I know if you're just building a practice, it might be a little difficult, but you need to design your business the way you want it. So if you're a realtor or you're somebody, you know, a, not if you're a doctor, you gotta go to that surgery. But if you're in a field that's demanding and you have it in your mind that you have to take those texts and those calls from six to 11 at night, mm-hmm. I have gotta tell you, you have to pick an hour or two that you're gonna show up for your family or you're gonna be a single person yeah. responding to those jobs. So say for example, you work all day till six and you turn off the phone from, remember how you did that for a week with your kids mm-hmm. from six to eight or something, you put it in a basket mm-hmm. and you guys all, you know, you just show up for each other at dinner yeah. time, you talk, you do homework together. And then at eight, if you have to go back and turn it on for another hour just to get those late night, like, oh my right. gosh, this is, you know, can I see you tomorrow at nine right. or whatever. But, and then maybe by 9.30 you turn Turn it off off. again so you can get your downtime and your rest. If you have to be available 24 hours for your job, I hope you're a brain surgeon or a cardiologist. Like, otherwise... You don't. You don't. Yeah. Because you're going to create... boundaries. Yeah, because you're going to create monsters. Your clients, people are teachable. Yes. You're telling them how to treat you. You're teaching them how to treat treat you. You You know, the other thing I think is important to mention, and it's uh, not just for your relationships that this is important, but also for your own mental health. You know, I mean, if you're time. having trouble sleeping, if you're ha- if you're noticing your anxieties Anxiety. through the roof, yeah. if you're noticing that you have a lot of distractions, if you're noticing that you're not as happy or creative, which is or what as the article creative was talking about. as you used your to imagination, be, your imagination, your creativity. Look at how often you are going to your phone, yes. and I think it will really be an eye opener. And I think that was what this article was all about. That he didn't even think to, that it was because of his phone right. and his devices. Sure. And then he started to put two and two together and realizing yeah. that's what was causing all of his problems. Yeah. So he had to put, I mean, listen, we can't live with our devices. Right. It's a reality of where we are. Yeah. Technology is where yeah. we are. But I think we can definitely set boundaries around it. And I know, you know, I am guilty just like anyone else of mm-hmm. cre- of having it too close sometimes. Yeah. And it's really heartbreaking. You know, we did a segment with um, Shannon's daughter, Hannah, about yeah. social media. Yeah. And see, I still have a house phone. <laughs> it's ringing. <laughs> Let me turn it off real quick. Turn off um, your devices and yeah. your house phone <laughs> right. and your pager no, like, if you have a pager. No one calls my house phone, by the way, other than, Ever. Other than people who want to sell me something. Yes. And my ex-husband. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the only two people who call my house phone ever. Um, but what I was, say- was, what I was saying was Hannah yes. um, to- talked to us about social media. Because social media is a huge part of that. Not just the emails and all the other stuff, yeah. the work stuff you're doing, but also social media. 
And what she said she did, which I love this idea, was she deleted the app off her phone. Mm -hmm. So she deleted Facebook and Instagram off of her phone so that it wasn't easily accessible. Right. You know, so my, she girl, had to go to her computer. my girlfriend yeah. did the same thing. She deleted the Facebook app because she was noticing she'd be at a stoplight and yeah. she'd be looking on her Facebook page yeah. at the stoplight, yeah. you know, or in the grocery checkout line, she'd be checking yeah. her Facebook. Sure. And so sometimes you just have to do that. Mm -hmm. You still have access via a computer. It's yes. just, it's not as easily available. So that, that will cut down on the addictive piece of it, of doing it every time you have a spare minute. So right. like, you know, when you're sitting at a stoplight, I was sitting at a stoplight once, probably in the last six months, and it was interesting. I was in the turning lane in the, in, to turn left, and the person crossing the center line was looking at their phone, and they were coming straight for me like a head-on collision, and I honked a couple of times, and they straightened up. How many times have you been head down at a stoplight? Right. And I thought, oh my God, this is why we're not supposed to be on our phones when we're driving, period, because I could say, well, I'm not driving, I'm at a stoplight, yeah. like I can't go anywhere. But I wouldn't have been able to alert that person that they were coming straight at me. Right. So I listen. I'm guilty of this when I get a second to oh, mm -hmm. let me just see who just texts me or let me make sure my daughter's okay or right. whatever excuse I come up with. Right. But that's why we're supposed to be alert at every moment because right. those millisecond things where you could alert someone else, hey, you're coming right at me, yeah, and they can straighten up. So right. it is really important. But deleting the app makes it impossible to even do that yeah. behavior. Yeah. And you can still give yourself 30 minutes in the morning or 30 minutes at night to go on Facebook and play around when you get right. up in the morning or before bed or you know, you know, know, an hour before bed on your computer. Mm -hmm. But then during the day, you're gonna be more present. Yeah. So that's a great idea. I yeah, love that. Yeah, I love that. I love what she did, what she said. Did, is it still deleted off of her phone? Do you know? Well, I was just gonna tease <laughs> and say she deletes it and then she downloads it. She deletes it and she downloads <laughs> She it. does still do it because she just said to me the right. other day, I was asking her a question. She's like, oh, I don't know. I have to download it. So she had deleted it again. Right. So she struggles with it though. Yeah. She recognizes that it's an issue for her. And she also right. recognizes like many of us, it impacts our mood. Like I was going on Facebook this morning mm -hmm. and I thought to myself, I'm in a pretty good space. I hope I don't see any death notifications. Yeah. Right? You do. You, you're scrolling. You're like, oh, this friend that I haven't seen for 25 years and now somebody just put rest in peace and now you're researching and oh my God, and yeah. I didn't know and oh my gosh, it's so, and there's my mood for the day. Yeah. So it really impacts you. You don't yeah. have any control over what's coming in. Yeah. So the other thing I was going to say is we were talking, you said about training people and I love that. If, let's say you're a realtor. You meet a new client or whatever. Hey, yeah, let me know if you see a house you want to text me, whatever. These are the ways you can reach me. Just so you know, from six to eight, um, you know, I'm without my phone. I'm just spending time with my family. Yeah. Who's going to argue with that? Right. And then you don't, you don't even have the excuse of, oh, they'll get mad if I don't respond. Right. Train everybody. Hey, right. from six to eight, I'm not available. Right. Like I do that as a therapist. If somebody texts me, not always, because I'm sometimes just want to get it off my plate. Yeah. But like if I go away with my husband for a weekend, this is a perfect example. He really wants me to put the phone like in the safe or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so I will just write down my messages or I'll make a note that on Sunday when I return, I'll go back through and look at all the messages and respond. Yeah. So I'll glance obviously to make sure nobody's in crisis. But a lot of times people are like, is my appointment Tuesday or Wednesday? <laughs> right. I don't remember. Right, right. Why move it from Thursday to Friday? Right. You know, so it's like, I know it's not at about an important, it's not important because it's a weekend. So I'm not yeah. showing up anyway. So right. even if it's not till Monday, I'll let you know Sunday. Right. But that's a boundary that I kind of set is like, if you text me like, hey, I was just wondering this you don't hear back from me for a couple of days and right. nobody's like fired me over it obviously if they're in crisis I'm right there so I can glance at it but otherwise then I go back on Sunday and just go through everything and then return those messages it's okay to set boundaries you're not yeah. gonna lose your whole business especially no. if you're if you have a talent and people enjoy yeah. what you do if you're, you're I mean, not most of, if you're at our age most people are already established it's not like you right. need to you know but we spin yeah. I, you, I gotta respond yeah, you I've gotta understand. respond right now yeah, the other thing is I, you know, what I've noticed since I left the news business was that I, you know, I was consuming so much bad content for so long with the news that oh. um, that my, I was just in constant like anxiety with the whole that fight, fight flight. Yeah, so I really noticed when I left the station. I decided I wasn't watching any news and I ha really ha don't. I mean, I really don't watch that much news at all. So my anxiety level came down significantly since I left. I mean, I've had some other anxiety because I didn't really have a job. <laughs> so, so there was that. But the, but the anxiety over what was happening in the world was really low. Like I don't, I only see what happens in my little bubble 
and it's pretty good, you know? Well, and you know what, so, so a million people, if a million people watch this, you know, whatever the number is right below a million would say to you, and I want to combat this, they would say to you, but how do you know what's going on in the world? So I want to give two examples because I don't watch the news either. Right. Two examples. Number one, when my daughter was traveling last week, this is how good spirituality was. My daughter was in Arizona getting ready to drive into the most treacherous floods that could exist. Okay. <laughs> and I don't watch the news, so right. I wouldn't know that. She had sent a message to a mutual friend of ours, a friend of mine that also mentored Hannah, mm -hmm. that lived in Austin, no, Houston, mm -hmm. and said, hey, I'd like to have lunch tomorrow. And she said, well, sweetheart, they're shutting down Houston. And then she texts me, hey, mama, just want to let you know your daughter's heading into a flood, blah, 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 blah. I was able to research, call her back, get mm -hmm. things on track, and everything was fine. And I never saw a stitch of news right, before that, that happened. Right. Hep A. I, walked, I went to lunch with my husband the other day, decided to go see my best friend at work, walked into her place of business. She said, well, you didn't eat at Cooper's Hawk. I said, yeah, we did. We just ate at Cooper's Hawk. She's like, they <laughs> just a released, hepe. there's a hep A. <laughs> and I was able to, within six hours, get to the um, Publix, get my immunization, mm -hmm. and everything's fine. Never saw a news report, never had to read anything. People can't stop talking about the news. Yeah. People can't stop talking about the hurricane, the this, the that. You do not have to watch the news to be informed. You can yeah. walk into Publix and see that people are buying 16 things of water right. and know that there's a hurricane, <laughs> hurricane coming, coming. And then right. go do your due diligence on what you need to do for your environment. Right. But let me tell you something. What's happened is that you were being saturated. All of us are being saturated because mm -hmm. we're watching the news. So we're hearing about 50 shootings and drive-bys mm -hmm. and all this. Then we're going into public, standing in line, and the person in front of us is like, did you hear about Stoneman Douglas? Yeah. Did you hear about this? There was another shooting last night. It was in Texas. So then you're getting that information. Right. Then you're walking to your car, and there's somebody with a sign that says something about it. Right. Then you're getting in your car, and you're listening to your XM radio that also starts with that, even though right. they're not even supposed to give you the news or any right. <laughs> report. You are going to get it everywhere anyway, so yes. if you watch the news you're like spoon feeding those toxins yeah whereas the world's going to provide what you need to know in your environment and i think spiritually what you need to know right i mean that might seem ignorant to some people but i was blown away those are two very kind of high risk situations that i found out everything i needed to know and i didn't open a newspaper i didn't open a news report i didn't watch tv i didn't hear it from any news source i heard it from just my community yeah and was able to make things safer you know it's funny because i was scrolling through facebook a couple of weeks ago and like i don't i don't really i don't watch the news and i saw there was another school shooting mm -hmm. and it instantly because someone had posted the article yeah. you know and it instantly made and i was so just, mad so, yeah i was so mad that someone had posted that on their facebook page i'm like i don't want to see this i don't need mm -hmm. to know about this like it just and I instantly went off Facebook because I was so pissed that that had stolen my peace. I know. It had stolen my peace. Yeah, and, you know? it, and it hurt your soul. It hurt my soul. And I was like, I do not need to see this stuff. Yeah. And so, yeah, I mean, and people posting like, like abused animals and stuff like that just, I'm just like, why yeah. do we need to see that? Because yeah. <laughs> it does, it alters your whole mood. Right. And not, not to be disrespectful at all to the people that are suffering. Like I, every night my prayers get longer for shooting victims and people struggling with cancer, all of that good stuff. But when I take in 50 pounds of right. that, I, I it saturates me. Yeah. I can't handle no. it. And that's what you're really referring to. It's not right. that you're not going to have, not that you're not going to have, have empathy, compassion and empathy right. every night and, and do whatever you can right. to contribute to you funds and to, donate. You have to take you care of yourself. To, you can't ingest so much. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You have to have some control over what you're ingesting. Right. Yeah. So boundaries around your phone and your devices, boundaries mm -hmm. for yourself, boundaries yes. for your kids. Yeah. Um, because we're teaching our kids mm -hmm. how to be, you know, how yes. to be with these devices. And this is going to be their world. Mm -hmm. This is going to be their world. We grew up in a very different time, so we right. did not have all this. It's kind of crazy to me, like, how our generation is probably some of the worst people on their phones, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. like you see people and it's, it's usually our, our yeah. generation. Yeah. It's like we always make fun of the kids. We always say, Oh, those kids, they're always on their phone. Yeah. Well, hello. Do you see the parents? Yeah. No, <laughs> right? I can't, I gotta be honest. It, it, you know, my wound, you know, when we talk about the Imago couple stuff, mm -hmm. you talk about wounding my wound from childhood is that I was invisible. Mm -hmm. And when I am out and I see a mom with a kid 
with a stroller on her phone, shoving the stroller, missing those coups, missing yeah. that eye contact, missing, not they're sleeping fine, but I don't see that. The baby's looking, trying to connect, whatever, or the two-year-old or whatever, and everybody's on their phone. It is, it is physically painful, painful for me because I know that child, if not today, tomorrow, in a year, five years, they feel completely invisible. Yeah. They do not feel seen. And let me tell you something, as a parent, mirroring your child. Oh, look at you, you're a football player. Oh, look at your paint. toenails are painted blue. You're a girly girl. Giving feedback to your children is a critical part of raising them and what they develop and yeah. who they become. So if you're on your phone and they're, mommy, look at me, look at my nail. Oh yeah, look, you're missing the boat. Yeah, You are missing the boat. You're gonna wound them. It's mm -hmm. gonna affect them. I'm sorry to be so like rigid with this, but it is just the facts, man. Mm -hmm. And so you need to be able to be, your children need to be visible to you. And that's what, that's why it hurt your heart. And it should. Yeah. Like when we're missing something, when we're yeah. missing seeing our kids. Now granted, you know, our kids can also be very narcissistic. <laughs> and like and needy. You know, so find <laughs> right. the balance there. Right. You can right. take an hour right. and be like, mommy's going right. to take an hour. But I think setting a boundary around a time. So the yes. kids know every day from 4 o'clock to 8 o'clock or whatever whatever time they're frame, visible to they you. Are, they are, you're present. Right. 100% present. Right. You know? And I used to say to my kids at 10 o'clock, because my kids are hyperactive, so I would even say 10 or 11, they'd be like, mom. And I'd be like, I am sh done. Yeah. Like closed for business. Like, well, it's, can't and do you know, it. I think it's also to be good to be honest with your kids. Like for yeah. instance, you know, I pick up my kids every day from school. I'm very present with them. I help them with homework. I'm cooking dinner. And then I like, if I have something to do yeah. later, I'll say, Hey kids, I just want you to know yeah. that at seven o'clock mommy has to get back on the computer. Cause I've got some work I yeah. gotta get done. And so as fair. long as you tell them and they know like, okay, going in that right. you've got stuff you got to get done. I think that's fair. It's yeah. important to teach our kids that we're not always available, but right. when you are saying you're available, be, be available. available. Don't yeah. say, I was sitting right there watching your game. No, you weren't. You were sitting right there watching your phone. Right. So if you're going to be available in those moments, you need to be, be available. available. That's good advice. We're All done right. preaching. <laughs> Well, that was longer than mic. we expected. I know. We had a lot more to say than we That's thought. Right. Okay, and don't forget, our next live show is a week um, a week from, or it's in about a week. Yeah. It's going to be at the um, Inn Spa at the Delray Beach Marriott on Friday, June 21st. If you would like to come, there's going to be spa treatments available. Is it June 21st or June 7th? I'm sorry, June 7th. June 7th. <laughs> I was like, hold on, crazy lady. June, June 7th. June 21st is the Roby show. That's yeah. a different thing. Different okay, show. June June When you 7th. get popular, you confuse all your events. Right. So June, June 7th, 7th at the Inn Spa at the Delray Beach Marriott, we're going to be doing spa treatments for our live audience. Ooh. I know. So this is a special one. So if you want to come, Stephanie, um, email Stephanie, Stephanie at SuzanneBoydProductions.com, and she will get you on the list. It's going to be fun. Yeah. Nice. And we're talking about self-care, so... Yes. Come do some self care and we'll tell you about it while you're getting it. We're going to be talking more about boundaries, too. Yes. <laughs> lots of boundaries around here. All right, guys. Have a good day. Bye. Bye.